Hi, I'm Becky. My channel is What Beck Sews. Welcome back if you're a subscriber and welcome if you're new. Today we're here to do the So Frugal reveal and everything that I have been making up for this challenge. So the challenge was to take a pattern which was completely free and accessible to anybody and find a piece of fabric from your stash and get it sewn up and then reveal it on the 31st of March. So I have done that. I have got more than I thought I would have in makes and I have ended up going down a diff different pathway to some of the things that I'd sort of suggested and some of this has been influenced by the fact that there wasn't enough fabric in some of the fabrics that I'd originally dug out to make what I wanted to make and of course the lovely vloggers that have been doing the vlogging tour throughout the month of March so because there's been so many people vlogging They've managed to inspire me to go a bit away from what I was doing in the first instance. So let's get started on what I've been making. So the first thing that I got made up this month is the lovely ruby skirt by Sew Over It. Now I made this from a fabric that I've had in my stash for quite some time. And for those of you that have been watching me for a while, I have been, um, I've got about four or five different colourways of this particular sort of fabric um, type which is a uh, viscose linen and also um, I've got it in several different colourways. So this fabric came from my local fabric shop Fabric Emporia and um, I have done it with the patch pockets and then it's got buttons all down the front. Now I know some people have made this without the buttons actually doing up but I have made sure that I can do and undo my buttons all the way down and I also left a small gap right at the bottom where I could add uh, where it sort of gave a slit effect because it's quite a long styled skirt I wanted to be able to um, have that openness because I am very short and it does make me look or it can make me look shorter but I love this make for a free pattern. It's a fantastic pattern. So it's the Sew Over It Ruby Skirt. And they do, I think, have a sew along on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that they've got tutorials on their stitch school for it as well. Um, but it comes together really easy. It's a really well drafted pattern. And it just looks amazing on. Um, I really want to make a few more of these up. In fact, I was so tempted and it was really hard not to get distracted to not make more up for this particular challenge. I'm thinking the next one I'm going to make is actually a viscose one. Um, whilst I love the way that this one looks, it is a little bit structured because of the linen in the fabric. I think an, a nice drape would do the world of good for it and I might actually shorten it a little bit more just so it sits just below the knee on me rather than that sort of midi style length. But I do love this and it's something that I will wear um, and get lots of wear out to come. Now the other thing that I made to pair with this because I really wanted to have an outfit was the um, Tammy Handmade Etty Camisole. Now this is one of the ones that I got distracted by with the vloggers. Now I downloaded this pattern last year when So Frugal was on and um, I really wanted to have another go at making this up because the one that I made, I didn't make for the challenge last year, the one that I made in June, I, I don't know whether it was the way I was handling the fabric or what have you, but it just wasn't going well. So I was trying to think of what fabrics I had in my stash that I could pair with the ruby. And because the ruby had these gorgeous little white flecks with the pink flowers, and I did have some pink um, cotton jersey, but unfortunately I'd bought that this month, so it wouldn't have been eligible for the um, challenge. So I've paired it with this white viscose twill that I got I think from Rainbow Fabrics, um, definitely at some point last year um, with the idea of making something plain and simple that would go with lots of different garments in my wardrobe. And I thought as we're coming into spring, summer, this particular would be perfect because I can pair it with a blazer or a cardigan or something like that. The nice thing about this pattern is you've actually got a lovely scalloped edge and I was very impressed with the way that that was sewn. Downsides to this pattern, there's no darts. Now, I have a um, a large or a fuller chest. I don't have a large, large chest, but I certainly have a fuller chest. And I do notice there's a slight bit of gaping. Now, obviously, as I'm talking through these, I will pop some footage in of me wearing them. And I do feel that that little bit of gape there, whilst it's fine because 
with camis I tend to wear them with like a jacket or I tend to wear them with a blazer anyway um, so I don't think it would be that noticeable but I did feel that gaping was very obvious and if we were in the really hot summer months I don't know whether that would deter me from wearing it um, without a jacket because I, it would be one of those things as a sewist that is blindingly obvious to me. However, I think if you had a smaller bust, it would look great because it would just drape beautifully on the body. Um, so it's just something to bear in mind if you do decide to make up that pattern. But that was my second pattern and one full outfit that I'm really, really pleased with. So that is the Etty Camisole by Tammy Handmade and it's a free pattern. So the next pattern I made up was one that I had discussed in my So Frugal original vlog and I will link the card somewhere in here for you to go back and have a look at it. All of the patterns that I discussed today will be down in the description box below. So this was the Wonder Colots by Sew so Magazine. This is a great pattern, guys, and I really recommend it. Now, what I will say about Sew Magazine patterns, their instructions aren't brilliant, so you would need to have some basic understanding of construction. So if you are a beginner and you've never constructed a pair of trousers, so say you've constructed the Squaro trousers, for example, this would be a great pattern because you'd know exactly what you're doing because they're very similar in the way they're constructed. Um, but yeah, the instructions aren't brilliant, so I'd recommend a bit of knowledge of sewing before making anything. But the fit on these is great. These sizes aren't that inclusive. They go up to a size of 20, but actually my measurements put me in a size 18. I've got a um, hip of, um, my hip is 46. So um, yeah, it, when you look at the actual sizes, they go up to 20, but I had to make a size 18. Now I do think I could have sized down in these, I must admit. Now, for those of you that watched my original video, you're going, she's made it in the pink check fabric. Now I have made it in the pink check fabric. When I came to lay this out on the pink tencel that I'd originally put to one side for this, the pattern pieces were far too big because they're quite a wide leg clot. So I was desperate to try it. I still wanted that pink look and I had the pink gingham fabric. Now I must admit, they are beautiful. I had to take quite a bit off the length because I'm a short ass, so you know, you need to take a bit off the length for that. Um, and I have ironed in a crease down the front because I think it gives that a slightly smarter look. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see in the footage that I put in. It's got an elasticated waist and I have done the top stitching that I would normally do on any waistband that I do just to hold the elastic in place. Because of my mum term, I tend to find that it will do that. It will automatically fold over on me and it drives me around the bend. So I have done that on there and that's not stated on the pattern, but I think it gives that lovely gathered effect look. Um, I'm not sure how to style these yet. I think it's because they are very loud and garish with them being gingham. Um, my mind with gingham when you wear them on trousers goes straight to pyjama bottoms. And these don't look like pyjama bottoms to me because the way that they I drafted, they definitely look like clots, the fact that they're shorter. I've just got to play around a bit with the styling. But you'll see in the footage that I've got in here, I've just styled it with plain white top, just so it can, um, you can get the maximum effect. But I really do like this. And actually I think with a pair of heels, these would look great. I spent a lot of time before making the decision to make them up in that fabric to look on Instagram at gingham trousers. Um, which is not always easy to find. Sometimes when you type a hashtag in, you don't necessarily find much under there. And there was a few things on that, but most of them were tapered leg trousers. So I wasn't really fully getting the idea of how it turned out, but I am very pleased with them. And once I've played around with the styling of them, I think that they will look brilliant. Um, so yeah, that is a, another make that I got done, which I am very very pleased with and that was in my original plan so the ruby skirt and the uh, wonder clots were two of the things that i had discussed in my original plans vlog so what did i get up to next let's talk about the last skirt the last pattern that i actually sewed up from the vlog that i did at the beginning of the month now i have shared this one with you in my friday so so this is the eloise skirt by sew magazine again Great drafted pattern. Again, I think I could have sized down one, so it goes up to a size 24, I think this one. 
I fall within size 18, but I think because they don't have the finished garment measurements, I do think I could have gone down one size in this. Now, when I showed you this in my Friday sews, it was a 12 version. I wasn't 100% happy with how it was fitting. Now, if I can find it, I'll put in the footage that I took of the skirt on, on the first instance, and then I'll put in some footage afterwards. But what I actually essentially did with this particular pattern was I took a load of length off the bottom and I made it so it sits just above the knee on me. And I find that that actually looks much better. Now I made this in a cotton poplin that I've had for ages. I think I got this cotton poplin from, Fab no, from Pound Fabrics. Again, at the beginning of last year, I do find I don't work with cotton poplin a lot because it is a structured fabric and I am, even with jerseys like this, for example, I prefer a viscose jersey I prefer viscose because it just gives a better drape in the way it sits. So I, it took me a while to get used to whether I'd like this or not with it being so structured. But I do think with what I've done with it, it is wearable. Um, and maybe as I, as we get more into the spring months, I'll play with the styling a little bit more and I'll get there. And I've just paired this with a black vest top just to give you an indication of something I could wear with it. But through the winter months, because it's got that dark background or winter, we're in spring now, but this is the UK, the weather's not really that great. Um, I could put a turtleneck on with it, um, put some tights and some boots on, and I think that would also look really nice because it's a cotton poplin. There's a little bit more warmth to it. It's not thin as a rayon so that was the um the last of the ones out of my vlog now i said in my friday sews that one of the things with the instructions because they are basic it is a fairly straightforward and simple skirt to sew but you do need to again as the instructions aren't there to hold your hand they don't have the pictures with it um and they forgot the gathering step and i had a head scratching moment because i couldn't understand why the waistband was so small in comparison to the skirt and there isn't a zip on the side and there's a hook and eye closure at the top so i recommend a little bit of experience just before or having constructed a skirt previously and then you can work your head around it but all in all really nice so really pleased with the outcome of it um yeah and that is my ella louise skirt ella louise i can't say that word very well can i so this is where I went a bit rogue, um, like with the Etty camisole, I'd seen lots of people vlogging about various different patterns and I'd actually printed off some patterns last year after um, seeing So Frugal and I was watching something else and I came across this pattern and this is the Peppermint Magazine Slouchy Cardigan. Now, I really like this. I actually think I could size down for the next one. I'd bought a waffle knit fabric from Pound Fabrics at the beginning of this year and had intentions of turning it into a cardigan. I don't know if you can see that right, there you go. Um, and had intentions of turning it into a cardigan. And it's sort of like a circular, and it's got a circular shape. It's got a hem band all down the side. It goes round and round the bottom of the back. I will put in some footage so you can see it a little bit easier. I've done it in black. I have got other jerseys in my fabric. I had some quite loud and vibrant pattern, uh, patterned jersey, but I did feel that I needed something plain. Now, because this is a waffle knit, it doesn't have the drape that I would expect from a viscose or even a cotton jersey. So I must admit, because it's a bit too big for me, I can see it when I look in the mirror and I do think it would be better made in one of those other materials. I've got some other fabric that I actually want to make this up in and I will size down one. I made the F, which is what my garment measurements put me in, but I think, and I'd size down from what my garments, my measurements actually, actually put me in, if that makes sense. But I think, because I'd read some reviews on that, sorry, I will finish that whole sentence and get my thought trail in process. Um, but I think I should have made this in a E, um, possibly um, a D, because it is quite an oversized cardigan with it being slouchy. Um, but definitely can go down one more size, may go down two. But I'll have a go at making this in my um, cotton jersey that I've got which is bright pink, um, and see how that actually looks. But hopefully I've put some footage in again for you to see me in this and you can have a look yourself and make your own conclusions. But I really do love this piece. I haven't actually put a label in it, I've just realised. Um, but yeah, 
So that's the Peppermint Cardi magazine, slouchy, uh, slouch, slouchy Cardi, um, and I'm really pleased with that make too. So this particular one I have printed off last year, and then I think it was Becky from Notes in the Sewing Room that had mentioned this uh, t-shirt pattern when she was doing her Sew Frugal vlog, but she's made this up several times, and um, I thought, right, I'm going to give it a go. I've got a very small amount of black cotton jersey in my stash and I, when I was looking at some of the the loud makes that I'd made with the skirts and the fact that they were printed I was sitting there thinking I need some plain cotton jersey it would have been nicer if I had white and like I said I've got a fuchsia pink on in my stash but I bought that at the um, sewing for pleasure show so I know that I can't use that particular one and because it wouldn't have been able to be entered into the challenge so I may go revisit this pattern um, to make some t-shirts out of some of the recent plain fabrics that I've bought. So the Galaxy Tee is a very simple tee with a sort of gathered in sleeve and then it has got a gathered in head on this bit. I have done this slightly different. Um, I have done pleats on mine because I liked the way that the pleats looked. So I've just pleated into that band and then um, it's got quite a high neck, but actually I don't mind it in the colour that I've made it in. I'd probably lower the neck, neck if I made it in a different colour. But black suits me quite well, so I feel that it'd look quite nice against um, being quite high, if that makes sense. This is sort of the neckline I love. Um, this dress, by the way, is the Tabitha t-shirt dress that I made in oh, last year at some point um, from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. And it's out of the Stitch Fabrics. And I have lowered the neckline on the Tabitha t-shirt dress just to make it more me. Um, so yeah, going back to the paper cloth um, pattern. Lovely pattern, comes together really easy. The instructions are brilliant. It's another indie pattern company, so it really holds your hand. And I do find and have found with everything I've made up, the indie pattern companies do tend to make better free patterns than say the magazines. And I will talk about some of the ones that I attempted at the end of this vlog when I've showed you everything that I've made up. And then the last thing that I actually got made up was this tank top by Ellie and Mac. I was really surprised at how much I liked this. I had, when I was searching for some plain jerseys, I found some of this red in my stash and I used this at Christmas to make my girls up some pyjama tops. And um, I didn't quite have enough of it to make up the um, T-shirt, so I decided to go with this. There is a reason why I went with the red, because there was another make that I was making that wasn't successful for So Frugal. Um, and this would have gone lovely underneath that. But this comes together really well. It's a free tank top. It's really well drafted. The neckline goes in great. It's got a curved hem at the bottom. And at the back, which is where you get a bit of shaping, because it's got a slight curve as it comes in um, and you piece that together, it just gives that shape to fit lovely on. Um, and I'm definitely going to make some more of these as we go into the summer months because I can see me wearing these quite a lot. The fit's really good. The pattern's really size inclusive. Um, I will pop the link down below to all of these patterns. But yeah, this is the Ellie and Mac tank top. Again, it's another free pattern. And there is a pocket on the front of that pattern. But putting pockets in jersey, I always think, is when you can get into the realms of it looking a bit homemade sometimes if you don't sew it on right. So I just avoided sewing that on altogether. Um, and yeah, really, really happy with that make. So that is everything. That is the whole array of what I got made up for So Frugal. I'm so impressed with how much I did and how much pleasure I took out of it. So as a lesson from all of them, things that I definitely would make again, the ruby skirt, have a go at that in viscose, it's a brilliant pattern, really recommend that. The peppermint magazine in the folds pattern, um, slouch cardigan, really liked that. I'd definitely give the paper scissor cloth um, Galaxy T, another go, but maybe alter the neckline and certainly make the Ellie and Mac um, top again. I'd also make the Winslow Colots again because they are really nice and it's a good, well-drafted pattern. It's just the instructions aren't brilliant. So I think out of everything I've made, that's really not bad. Whether I'd make the Etty camisole again is still to be 
decided. I think because I, I think I need to purchase a pattern that has bust starts. I, I just think I need to purchase one. And the Ogden Cami has the hack to make the slightly wider sleeves, uh, wider straps. So I think I'm going to give that a go this year. So what else did I attempt to make out of my plans? I tried to make the Alex Shacket, which was a pattern from Sew Magazine. And actually it was coming together beautifully, but I lost the collar piece. And this was one I was sewing up this week and I didn't have time to get the pattern reprinted. So I attempted to just draft my own collar based on the fact that there was very limited instructions and in trying to work out how that collar was going in. And I made a collar that was very similar to the patina blouse, obviously not as low or along the side, but it just did not look right in comparison. So it just took the whole thing out of proportion. It looked awful and the instructions were terrible. I'm just so pleased that I have made up shirts before that I understood how it was supposed to be coming together because when I looked at the instructions, they just weren't there. So the Alex jacket was the other one I tried to make up. I also went to make up a black pair of these because I had some black viscose in my stash. And I was messing up all the sewing because I was in that rushing frame of mind. That was at the beginning of this week. So I've got most of these done prior to this week. Throughout the month, I've been picking a garment or especially with jerseys, quick fixes um, as sort of palette cleansers in between my sews. And I was rushing these black trousers because I really wanted a pair of black trousers because I thought that it would be quite uh, versatile in my wardrobe. And I could then pair it with some of the more patterned tops that I have. So I just messed up the sewing process of that. And in the end, I didn't picked it so many times because it was a black viscose. It was quite thin. And I just thought, I'm going to give up. It doesn't matter. And it was only a cheap viscose from Pound Fabrics. I think it was a couple of quid a metre and I just decided not to do it. So that was the couple of disasters that I had. Now I did have other plans on there to make a sheer dress that is still in very much in my plans to make as we go more into the summer months from the Red Gingham Seersucker. So that will be made. Um, whether I use that particular pattern, which is the broken pattern for that, or the new Tilly and the Buttons pattern, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll just see what happens with that. But that sheer dress that Brogan shares the tutorial on, I definitely will be making. The dungarees from the Stitch Sisters as well, I definitely want to get that made up. I just didn't really have any appropriate fabric in my stash to do that, which is why it didn't get made up this particular month. So I hope you've enjoyed this vlog today. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing what I've got made up for So Frugal and that you will come back for more. If you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to give this vlog a thumbs up so others can see it in the sewing community. Have a fantastic day. I hope you're inspired to go off and make lots more free patterns and use up some of your stash. Take care and I'll catch you all soon. Bye.